Hi guys, it's Amy from Nail Polish Baby 90. Welcome to today's video. Today Andy is sitting here. So Come she on. help me. Uh, so we might have her I feel like I'm like off center in the camera. We're having like a really messy day like you well you can see this. I won't even try and explain that. But I've got stuff like off camera, I'm like on an angle. This is not uh, the best filming day, but it is the only opportunity we have this week. And I haven't been able to film as much recently. So I thought no we should just get in and do no uh, no uh, no my favourites. You can already tell this video is going to be fun to edit because I'm going to have to email, like, edit out all of her little chippings as we go. Uh, but yeah, May, my favourites, yeah, I think that sounds about right. Um, although it doesn't because that means that we're coming up to like the halfway point of the year and yeah, that's crazy to me. Um, I hope you're all doing well in the UK COVID wise. Really, really good. Lots of vaccinations, um, lots of uh, restrictions being finally lifted. So I had my hair cut and uh, I've got a tattoo booked in a few weeks and beauty salons are open and shops are open and restaurants are open and cinemas are open. So we're pretty much there. There's a few things are, that are closed, but on the whole, so much happier to be allowing some sort of normality to resume. I wore a ton of polishes this month. Um, I swatched a couple of Zoya collections. Um, I had some Essies. I had more Essies actually, which are in that pink container. So a lot, a lot of swatching. Then at the end of the month, nail breaks. So I'm down to nubbins again. Uh, so hopefully in a few weeks time, they will grow back enough for me to continue doing some swatching. Uh, but for now, they are out of action. So monthly favorites, if you haven't watched before, we always go through everything that I wore in each month. And so let's do my what I wore in May. Two mainstreams. The first one is called Zip It Up, and this is by the Essie, Essie in their Gel Couture range. Um, I thought I would pull this one out after I did do a wear test of Essie Gel Couture earlier in the month, and it reminded me that I had this one that was an untried and unworn. Um, I put this on. It was a pretty good formula. I want to say that it's maybe like the cousin of Chilato by Essie, where you were getting that kind of like minty white colour but this had a much better formula than Chilato and there is also a very subtle kind of bluey flash that is as subtle in the bottle as it is on the nails so I did enjoy that one and that's like I say it was just an Essie Gel Couture that I hadn't worn yet three coats of uh, say zip me up zip it up but it's zip me up Essie Gel Couture one for one of my recent hauls, and this is Creative Fantasy by China Glaze. For some reason, this was on my lemming list of polishes that I wanted to have. I think part of it was because this Cirque du Soleil collection never truly released over here. Um, it was one of those ones that never hit Sally. Sometimes when there are mid-season collections, Sally's won't stock them over here. It, they kind of just do the traditional seasons. And we don't often get the Halloween lines and things like that. This is a crelly, like, bright purple. If you thought this was going to be a cream, I could, it would be disappointing to you. But I went into it knowing it was a crelly jelly finish. It took three coats. It was super squishy. Not going to be for everybody. And like I say, if you bought this thinking it's going to be super opaque, it's not. Three Coats of Creative Fantasy by China Glaze. And then a ton of indies. Let's just kind of grab and go, shall we? I have one, oh my goodness. This one was from Quixotic Polish and it's called Beyond the Sea. And so many people commented on how astounded they were with this on my Instagram. I picked this up in a D stash as kind of a random because I really wanted to explore more Quixotic Polish. So I picked this one up and the shimmer in this is Phenomenal. Going to be my favourite polishes of the year. It's so good. Takes three coats to build up to be completely opaque, but as you'll see from the photo, the flash is one of a kind. So, so good. Everybody else has had their mouths, uh, jaws dropped open when they saw it, just like I did as I was applying it. So three coats of Beyond the Sea by Quixotic. As always, all indies will be linked down below for you. We then have a pampered polish, and this is Science Rules, and this was from the... Uh, August polish pickup, which I think was science or something along the sciencey lines. So this is again kind of similar to Creative Fantasy, where you're getting like a really nice bright purple, and also in a crelly mixture because then you're getting itty bitty 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 oh. tiny little flakies of pink and brighter blue. So you get the pink and the blue in the purple, which is a great combination. Took three coats where it was more of a crelly, but that one there was science rules. Three coats, pampered polishes. This video is going to be so long. I can just feel that I've got so many. Polish. Polishes to talk about. I try not to go too fast because they all deserve their moment. 
a Stella Chrome before you and this is Alohomora. This was from the Caster Spell Box from last year. It was the last one that I had to wear and it's because it's a yellow gold and if you're not, if you're not, if you're new here, you won't know, but I don't really like yellow golds too much. They're not my favourite. I kind of like rustic, antique golds, but these kind of bright yellow ones are just not for me. Uh, as always, it did have a beautiful formula. It was completely opaque in two coats. But it's just not my colour overall. Love you, Stella Chroma. Just not a yellow gold. That was two coats of Aloha Mora Stella Chroma. I'm getting a numb foot. I'm getting a numb bum. One from a KB Shimmer, and this is called How's It Growing? Um, and this is a nice grassy green base with a ton of duochrome flakies in it. And then the duochrome flakies that kind of go from orange to blue, so the kind of middle of the spectrum. So it looked just really green and then you had the added leafy texture of it where you had this yellow green orangey type flex and it's coming back to you there is no such thing as too many flakies in a polish and this is absolutely chocker block two coats for a full opacity how's it growing kb shimmer and he's now sitting like here um so that's why i'm kind of leaning half on the chair to support and hope it doesn't spin around on my spinny chair we have two from Dollish Polish. The first one is called He Who Walks Behind the Rose. If you are interested, Dollish Polish is one of the brands that does like a polish pickup mystery or just a mystery listing, which could be a polish pickup overpour. And that's how I got this collection, this polish. So it was one from not last year, the year before. And it's a really nice kind of like rusticy orange base. And then there is some warm tone flakies plus a little bit of shimmer in there. I can't remember what horror movie this was inspired by. I looked it up and everything, I swear. It wasn't Children of the Corn, was it? Someone's going to tell me down below. He who walks behind the rose. So someone tell me. Um, not particularly into horror movies, if you don't know that already. So I did miss the reference a little bit. Um, a nice three coat, so kind of glowy autumn leaves vibes. He who walks behind the rose, dollish polish, three coats. Have dingus and this is from their stranger things 3 collection i was going to pick the whole collection up because i do have all of number one and number two but i bought this in like was it black friday or some sort of sale and anyway by the time i got there the full collection was sold out so i just grabbed a few and dingus is i you may know if you're new again if you're new here hi i'm amy and i like blue and bronze together so this is a blue base and then there is red to orange flakies in there and a little bit of a ready shimmer again so I love blue and red blue and bronze blue and orange they are one of my favorite combinations of life so obviously I could not resist this three coats of dingish by dollish polish stay with me we've still got quite a few left to go I'm trying to go as fast as I can Two Rogue Lacquers. The first one was uh, From the Ashes We Rise, which was December 2020 polish pickup. Um, this was not what I expected. From the polish, you think it's going to be a really dark blue base with then the kind of, again, kind of what I've just described, the warm orangey red flakies. However, the base is either completely clear or very, very close to clear. And the blue that you're seeing is actually blue flakes with them. So it's not a blue blaze blue base with the flakes the flakes are also blue so it's a really fun combination but it just wasn't what i was expecting to start with therefore you had to do three coats to build it up it does cover completely it's really really shiny and blingy and like i said the, co the coverage of the flakies is really really nice it just wasn't what i was expecting so sometimes you're a bit put out because you're like oh, oh this is going to be a sheer harder application but it was totally worth it and it looked great Three coats of From the Ashes I Rise, From the Ashes We Rise from Rogue Lacquer. The other Rogue was one from their um, Hella Handmade Creations collection, which is based off of London. And this is called The Palace, which is inspired by Buckingham Palace. Um, I think it was from the inside, like there's some, some of the like, furniture on the inside of Buckingham Palace. I kind of just picked this up, one, because I like Rogue, and two, because I am trying to collect a lot of the London series. So it is a royal, rich red colour and then we have a ton of golden flakies in there. Golden golden red together just remind me of kind of like Christmassy festive colours and I guess rich and opulent. So that does I guess in a way describe Buckingham Palace. It was a nice easy two coater. The gold flaky sh um, like shone out really nicely through the red base. No complaints. Two coats of the Palace by Rogue Lacquer. We have a hair polish. This is a new to me hair polish and this one is called Return to Nature. This is a kind of 
it kind of looks like sand so it's like a putty sand base and then there is gold and silver glitters in there and that's what I did quite like about this is this my favorite hair polish I own no but the the one thing I did enjoy is the clash of metallics which I think I spoke about in a previous video that how much I like when gold and silver are together um, and like I say this was just in a kind of a sandy base so it was three coats of Return to Nature by Hair Polish. We have a really, really funky, fun one here, which is Happy Birthday by, by Danny Vienna. This was inspired by the cake that Hagrid gives to Harry in the first Harry Potter film. So it is a pink base with the green glitters in there, which is the pink cake with the green icing in the film. So I really love the nod to that. I love the spelling of Happy Birthday being how Hagrid writes it on the cake. Uh, and I thought, again like clashing colours if you ever did get them of green and pink together really really beautiful formula two coats of happy birthday by by Danny Vienna two more than one rewear so we have a colour by colours by LaRoe you're a peach colours by LaRoe doesn't exist anymore I didn't think and then the other day I thought I saw that they were in a like, uh, like a monthly box so maybe they're not, or maybe they've had that already pre-decided, I'm not really sure. But You're a Peach is not a peach. Um, I don't know if this was originally a peach. I did buy this in a D-stash or a mystery bag, so I don't know what it was originally. But to me, this is kind of like a really nice um, pinky red kind of holographic. Is it the most hollow polish that you're ever going to see in the world? No. Um, but it, it was a really pretty one. I do like having a few colours by La Rose just because they were such an iconic brand and they don't seem to exist very much anymore. Uh, so that one there was two coats of Your Peach by Colours by La Rose. The last new one of the month was Lucky Charm by Fair Maiden. This is really, really beautiful polish. A lot of people tagged me and commented that they'd also picked this one up in Polish Pickup. So it is your mint green base and then there is a strong golden flash to it. Um, I, I love that to combination together and it just screamed Lucky Charm Irish. It, it ticked all the boxes for me. Um, I also really, someone said, I think I said this in the whole video that I got it, someone said that they didn't like the brush on the Fair Maidens but this is like a really nice wide paddle brush which is exactly what I like to use. So not sure if maybe they had some bottles with certain brushes where they'd run out or something, um, I don't really know. Um, three coats of Fair Maiden um, Lucky Charm. You made it to the end, hold on for 30 more seconds. One rewear, which is the one that I'm wearing today, Whenever I break my nails, I do tend to just rewear old favourites, and normally a lot of 9 0 lacquers. So, this one is a fireside, and I adore this. And orange is not really my colour, but something about this one, and then she has pumpkin everything and a holographic orange as well. Is that frequency maybe that I really like? I don't know if it's because it's like a warm tone, it's not like it's not too light and it's not too neon, which I struggle with, but this type of colour is just perfection. Um, two coats, I love it so much. And I'm glad I got, out to, got it out to rewear. But you're going to see an old swatch there of Fireside by 90 Lacquer. That was an extremely long May favourite. Like I said, I wore so much polish this month. I have a lot more to come and to sort out. So thank you all much, always, for your support. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe. Let me know what your June, May, no, it's May, May favourites were down below. And I will see you soon. Bye.